Hey, Cosmos students. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be going over chapter 25, which is the manicuring chapter. Let me bring this down so it's not covering everything. And move it over. This chapter, it's, it's a decent length, but it should go by pretty quickly. And some of the stuff you'll have heard like, oh, that's why they do that when they get my manicures or pedicures done. So this is a good, this is going to be a good chapter chapter to go over and get some information. Our learning objective for today. Oops. Okay. Our learning objectives for today will be able to describe the scope of practice, the potential consequences if a nail technician works outside of the state scope of practice, You'll also be able to be able to identify the four types of nail technology tools, the difference between multi-use and single-use implements. And finally, name and describe a three-part procedure using basic manicure and explain why the consultation is important before a service in the salon, which that's like the consultation is just refreshing it because I've stressed plenty of times in other chapters how important a consultation is when you're doing any service. And for our introduction today, once you have learned the fundamental techniques in this chapter, you will be officially on your way to providing clients with a professional manicure. A manicure is a cosmetic treatment of the hands involving cutting, shaping, and often painting of the nails, removal of the cuticles, and softening of the skin. A manicure and a pedicure services are currently the fastest growing services on salon and spa menus, which is very true. Lots and lots of people are starting to get them more and offering them in their salons or spas. The scope of practice is a list of services that you are legally allowed to perform in your specialty in your specific state. Every state has different services that you are allowed to do. So you might wanna check your state if you stay here or if you move to a different state to see what their SOP is. If you perform services outside of these regulations concerning, al uh, allow ugh, concerning allowable services, you may lose your license. You don't want to run the risk of losing your license because you want to try something that you've never seen no one do before. There's probably a reason, two reasons. One, one might be it's not allowed or two, you're just thinking outside the box and it's okay. But you always want to make sure some your services are okay and allowed to do in your specific state. Working with nail technology tools. As a cosmetologist, you have to learn to work with the tools that are required when you're doing a nail service, and you have to know the safety, the cleaning, and disinfection procedures as defined in your state's regulations. That comes the same thing when you're dealing with hair, when you're dealing with skin, and now when you're dealing with nails. There are four types of nail technology tools that you will incorporate into your service that are equipment, implements, materials, and products. And we'll go over each four of those as we keep going through the presentation. Equipment. Equipment includes all of the permanent tools that are not implements that are used to perform a nail service. So these implements don't leave. You don't have to throw them in trash or um, take them, remove them from its stationary position and go disinfect them and sanitize them, sterilize them. Do these equipments, they're permanent tools that you use. So we have a table and a lamp. You have the cosmetologist slash client's chairs. You have finger bowls, disinfection container. You have a client arm cushion, a service cushion, gauze, just cotton slash cotton wipe container. You have trash containers, supply tray, electric nail polish dryer, UV or LED light, electric hand foot mitts, terry cloth mitts, paraffin bath, and ventilation system. 
the manicure table, it normally includes a drawer and a shelf that has doors or doesn't have doors. For storing your properly cleaned and disinfected implements and professional products. The table can be different sizes, but it usually is 36 inches to 48 inches long. The surface of the table is the one thing that you have to be, has to be clean and disinfected between each client. So it must be a hard and impenetrable surface, such like, like glass or granite tops. I've seen some of those. It must be clear of any like dirt or clutter or anything from off your table. And then you have your lamp. Your adjustable lamp is attached to the table and it should use a 40 to 60 watt incandescent uh, in bulb, bulb or for fluorescent bulb. Your fluorescent bulbs are very popular because they emit a cooler light and most people prefer true color fluorescent bulb lamps because they show the skin and polishes in their actual natural color in natural light. Then you have your, the chairs for the cosmetologist and the clients. These chairs should be selected to make sure they're ergonomic, they're comfortable, they're durable, and they um, are resistant to staining and they're very easy to clean. The most appropriate chair, it has wheels on it, which will allow you as a technician to move around and go up and down to allow you to adjust to the client so that you're comfortable. As long as you're comfortable, that's all that matters. And you also want to have a chair comfortable for clients because they will be sitting there for a long time, but nothing too crazy fancy unless that's what you, your personal preference is. Then we have finger bowls. Your finger bowl is used for soaking, which is this right here. We've all seen them at the nail salon. Some people are getting manicures or if you've gotten them yourself. And they have warm water to soften the skin in the cuticle. And the finger bowls can be made of plastic, metal, glass, or even an attractive ceramic. And they should be easy to clean. They should be durable and easy to thoroughly clean and disinfect after each use of, from each client. And then we have our disinfection container. Even although your disinfection container is not required for setting up the manicure table, it is important to have the container readily available to start and end of service. Your disinfection container, it must be large enough to hold sufficient liquid, disinfectant solution to completely immerse several service sets, which are sets of all the tools that you will be that will be used in a service. The containers, they do not allow the entire implement which is including the handles to be submerged and are not acceptable for use in professional salons. You don't want to use them in professional salons. I have a client arm cushion. The cushion, this cushion is about eight inches to 12 inches and it can be cleaned with soap and water. And that is specifically made for the comfort of the client's arm is an option when performing nail services, services but you do not have to have it. I've seen people, I've been to nail um, salons where they've used a towel before. Um, it's all what they have and what they want to give their clients so that the client is more comfortable. Um, but that was probably like the low grade. So now I'm a little bit more bougie and we go to the ones that have the actual cushion and they'll put a towel over it clean towel between each client that way they don't have to go and sanitize the cushion itself every single time as long as you put a clean towel over the cushion and you remove it once you're done and put another clean towel and then you just disinfect it at the end of the day your service cushion which is optional is a foam, a foam cushion higher in the middle and lower on the ends and can be placed between the client and the cosmetologist during a manicure it is pro believed to provide more comfort during the service service for both parties. And it must be fully covered by a fresh clean towel throughout each service. And then we have gauze and cotton wipes containers. These This holds your cotton wipes and your gauze. It's um, 
and also holds lint-free wipes for your services. In this container, it must have a lid to protect the, the contents from dust and contaminants that float in the air when you're doing a manicure, pedicure, or any nail enhancement service. You have your trash containers. These have a self-closing lid. All trash cans should have a lid. And it should be located next to the workstation so it's easy for you to access. And easy, like some um, most nail techs that I've seen have the small trash cans that you put your foot on and the lid opens, they move their foot, the lid closes. It's a lot easier just to move your foot and it's more convenient. Then you have your supply tray, which is option, optional as well. Your supply tray holds professional nail products, such as your polishes, your polish removers, and your creams. And it should be easy to clean and sturdy. Many nail technicians, they put every product they need for a particular service on the tray and then lift it on and off a shelf in their station in one efficient movement for each service. It allows the service to move swiftly. There's no hiccups, there's no pausing, there's no, oh, let me come right back, I'll be right back to go grab this. You use it, it has everything that you need for that particular service on the tray. It just makes your life and your job a lot easier. Then you have your electric nail polish dryer, which is also optional. This nail polish dryer is designed to shorten the time necessary for the client's nail polish to dry. Electric dryers have heaters and fans that blow air onto the nail plates to speed evaporation of solvents from nail polishes, allowing them to harden more quickly. You have light bulb type dryers, create warmth to speed drying and work in the same fashion as electric dryers and may not have fans. And here's a trash can that I was talking about with the lever on the bottom, the way you could just put your foot on it and this opens and it closes. It's real easy, it's real convenient and you don't have to use your hands and continuously um, and touch the nasty trash cans. We have UVA or LED light, which is also optional. UVA is ultraviolet. And LED is light emitting diode. These lamps, they are not designed to dry to traditional nail polish. And these, la these lamps are, these lamps cure or harden products that contain photo initiators, which are designed to be sensitive to, a, to the UVA wavelength the bulb, that the bulbs emit. And these lamps are designed for traditional gels and gel polish current curing. I get gel polish a lot. So I get this, I use this. Well, my nail technician uses this when she's doing my nails. And it, you're able to get your nails done and it's drying between each coat. It's hardening between each, well, not hardening. It's curing between each coat. Then when once she's done with the final coat and you put your hands in the LED light or the UVA light, you sit there for a second and you leave. It's not, well, okay, my nails are done. Let me walk over here to this dryer, the fan, where it's taking me 30 extra more minutes to get my nails done. No, it's real quick, it's real easy and I love it. And I don't do anything else. Gel polish is my best friend, especially with my hands always in some water. Then we have our electric hand foot mitts, which are also optional. A lot of these are optional. You don't have to have them. It's, you can have them if you choose to, to make the service for the client a better experience or to make your job as a nail tech easier and cuts down on timing or helps cure the nails better. These are all optional things. You do not have to have these things as a nail tech. The electric hand and foot mitts, they're heated mitts, which are available for both your hands and your feet. And they are designed to add a special service to a manicure or a pedicure. These heated mitts, he's, heated mitts make for a higher cost service. So you can charge more for this, which and also can, can make it a add-on service. So you are upgrading your client's service, which makes them feel like they... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, more upscale, I guess. 
but you can also charge them for this. So don't, if you're going to have this in your shop, if you're going to be a nail tech, charge them for it or make it an upgrade or an add-on service. Then you have your terry cloth mitts. These are optional. These are washable mitts that are placed over a client's hands or feet after a penetrating conditioning product and a protective plastic cover has been applied. These mitts are routinely used over paraffin to hold in the heat or over masks to encourage the natural heat from the skin to enhance the penetration of the product ingredients. This is kind of the same, this is the same thing as far as when you're doing a deep conditioning treatment on a client's hair and you're using the processing cap and you're putting the plastic processing cap on the client's hair and you're putting them under the dryer, which allows the nutrients or the moisturizing treatment that you're using to penetrate deeper into the cuticle. It's the same thing when it comes to the terry cloth mitts. It acts the same way just on your nails. Then we have a paraffin bath, what paraffin bath, which is optional. The paraffin bath is a special heating unit designed to melt solid paraffin wax into a gel-like liquid, and it's designed to maintain it at a temperature that is generally between 125 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The ideal temperature for application for the hands and feet is between 125 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Never, 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 never try to heat the wax in anything other than a paraffin bath designed specifically for that use. It can be dangerous and it can result in people's skin getting burned or fired. And you don't want that. That just opens the door for you to get sued. And nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to be sued. A little description of what a paraffin is. It's a petroleum byproduct that has excellent sealing properties, barrier qualities, qualities to hold moisture in the skin can and can add can be added to manicures and pedicures for an extra charge. So I get this done every time I go to get go to get a pedicure. The service, the pedicure option that I choose is already comes included. So I don't see the extra charge, but I know it's there. But it just makes it your skin feel more moisturized and I love it especially since I'm on my feet all the time I definitely don't get my pedicures done without getting the paraffin and then we have your ventilation system which is also optional these are products that are used when performing nail services and they may contain chemicals that can affect a worker's health exposure to nail dust and chemical odors and vapors can affect one's breathing and respiratory health and these symptoms do not show immediately, but can sometimes take months or even years to appear. So proper ventilation should be used in the salon to protect nail technicians from becoming overexposed to vapors and dust. They're doing nails. I, I don't even know how many nail clients a nail tech sees in a day, but with all the, the dust in the air and all the chemicals in the air, a ventilation system is needed. I don't feel like it should be optional. I feel like it should be needed just to help protect the nail tech because they're sitting there all day. I know some they wear masks, but masks don't protect you from everything. They just don't. And then we have our multi-use implements, which are implements that are reusable. You can use these implements over and over again on multiple clients. You just have to clean them in between each client that you're using it on. And multi-use implements are generally stainless steel because they have to be properly cleaned and disinfected after you use them on a client and prior to using them on another client. You have some examples of some metal multi-use implements. You have metal pushers, you have a nail nipper, you have tweezers, and you have nail clippers. And we also have single-use implements. Single-use implements are the implements that get thrown away. They're disposable. They're not able to be used on multiple clients in a day. Once you use it and you're done with the service, you have to throw it in the trash. Some examples of a single use implement, you have brushes and applicators, the wooden pusher, a nail brush or application brush.
Oops. My bad, you guys. Just want to go back to this one. So for all of you who don't know what a metal pusher is or have never seen one um, because you've never got your nails done, which is fairly rare, a metal pusher, which is often incorrectly called as the cuticle pusher, that's not what it's called. It is designed to gently scrape cuticle tissue from the natural nail plate. It is not to be used to push back the epinicium, which we talked about in the previous chapter. Sorry, not the previous chapter, um, chapter 10, which is the living skin at the base of the natural nail plate that covers the matrix area. These are stainless steel and they are used carefully to prevent damaging to the natural nail and the nail matrix. Your nail nipper is a stainless steel. This is your metal pusher right here. And I'm pretty sure we've all seen them at the nail salons. A nail nipper is a stainless steel implement used to carefully trim away dead skin around the nails. It is never used to cut, rip, or tear live tissue because the live nail fold tissue is important to ward off microbes and prevent infection around the nail plate. Your nippers can be cleaned and disinfected before use on every client, taking special care to open the hinges for thorough cleaning and disinfecting. You want to always maintain a sharp edge on your nippers to prevent ripping or tearing of the dead skin, which can cause future hangnails, which we also learned about in chapter 10, and we learned about the nail plate and the nail folds in chapter 9. We all seen tweezers. We all probably have a couple pair at home. We've seen them here at school. You've seen them at the nail salon. You've seen them. I mean, we've all seen them. If you haven't seen them, you're living under the rock, under a rock, and I need you to come from up underneath the rock. Tweezers are multitask implements for lifting small bits of debris from the nail plate, retrieving and placing nail art, removing implements from disinfectant solutions, and much more. As you can use them, they get used for placing eyelashes, they get used for removing hair removals, they get used for a lot of things. They must be properly cleaned and disinfected before using every client because they may come in contact with the client's skin or nails, and they must be stainless steel to allow disinfection after use. Our nail clippers Shorten the free edge quickly and efficiently. If the nails need to be shortened more than the depth of a routine filing, they can be cut with the nail clippers. Clipping from the sides. So you wanna start clipping from the sides toward, and work your way towards the center of the nails to prevent stress to the sides and possibly splitting of your nails. Get it together. Where am I? There we are. Okay, we're back on track. So as I said previously, a single use, a single use implement is disposable and can only be used once on a client. Your brush applicators, your brushes and applicators is any brush such as those used to apply mask or an app or applicator or you, those used to scoop product from a container to the skin that comes in contact with the client's nails or skin during a manicure or pedicure, it must be properly cleaned and disinfected before use on another client. If you cannot clean it properly and disinfect it accordingly, to according to the state, you have to throw it away. There is no other option. There is no other way to go about it. Nail, but the only exception are your nail polish brushes because they are stored in an oxygen-free, water-free liquid, which is your nail polish, which does not allow the growth of microbes. So that is your only exception, 
as far as when it comes to brushes that you don't throw away. Then you have your wooden pusher. Your wooden pusher, which is this here, it is used to remove cuticle tissue from the nail plate to clean under the free edge of the nail or to apply products. You wanna hold the stick as you would like a pencil with the tip at a 20 to 30 degree angle from the nail plate while pushing the cuticle free. This is a single use implement and once you are done using it on your client, it has to go in the trash. Nail brush. This is a plastic implement with nylon brushes and it is used in many ways during the nail service. Clients use a nail brush when they arrive at the salon and perform the hand washing procedure. So these are the nail brushes that they tell you to use when you're they're done with your nails or they're about to apply the polish and everything they want. They tell you tell you to go, they tell you to go wash your hands and use the brush and scrub and brush your nails while you're washing your hands, and then typically will go in the trash. They are used um, to remove the debris from the nail plate, and it's very, very important. Nail brushes are used to scrub the implements clean before disinfection. This is a single-use implement. It will go in the trash. And then we have our product application brushes, which can be used to apply nail oils, nail polish, or nail treatments to the client's nails. And it is recommended that you purchase inexpensive, readily available packages of single-use application brushes to apply products that can support bacterial growth. You wanna dip enough product from the container for your entire application using the application brush, brush or pour enough product for the full application into a clean dampened dish and, the, and dip the application brush into the dish throughout your application. Remember, it's a single-use implement. It must be disposed or thrown away after you use it on the client. Now let's get into the materials. We have gloves, dust masks, abrasive files and buffers, two layer three buffers, single-use or terry cloth towels, gauze, cotton, and pads, plastic or metal spatulas, your gloves, they can be latex, latex free. Um, you wear them to protect you. As cosmetologists, you will wear them during hair service, um, nail service, or skin service to help prevent from exposure to microbes during any services. And since our skin can absorb the chemicals, the gloves help protect them. OSHA recommends nitrile gloves as they protect from chemicals where latex and vinyl do not. If a single client receives both a manicure and a pedicure, a new set of gloves must be worn for each service. You can't use the same nails for both of those services. Then you wanna wear a dust mask, dust mask, which is here, which is the mask that everyone has to wear, especially since COVID. We all wear them. We all know what they are. We all know what they look like and we all know where to get them from. These ones in particular, the dust masks, they are high quality, properly fitted dust masks when you're transferring chemicals from one container to another or when buffing or filing nails so that all this, the, the debris that's coming off or flying in there does that you don't breathe it in. It is best to use a round dust mask with a metal strip that you can adjust to fit the bridge of your nose properly. The ones we use when we squeeze them. We all know what these are. Then you have your abrasive nail files and buffers, which is your nail file here. And here's your buffer. Your nail file and buffers are generally single use only, and they are available in many different types and grits. I, I don't know about y'all, but I don't know how many nail buffers we've seen in nail salons, and they don't typically throw them away. Um, it's very rare that I've been to a nail salon where they actually use a new one on each client. The nail salon that I go to, the nail tech that I go to, she uses new ones on each client because they come out of a little package, or she has a bunch of them in a in drawers, and she uses a new one on a different client. But more times than not, Sometimes I've been to places where these buffers, they're all about to rip up and it just, it's just gross. 
So it's okay to be like, can you get a new one? Because they're single use, they're only supposed to be used on one client at a time. Um, so a little rule of thumb is the lower the grit, the larger the abrasive particles on the file and the more aggressive its action. Therefore, a lower grit abrasive, which is less than 180 grit, are aggressive and will click, click, quickly reduce the thickness of any surface. Lower grit files also produce deeper and more visible scratches on the surface than do higher grit. So with that being said, lower grit files must be used with caution and are not used on natural nails since they cause damage. These ones are typically used once they put your nail enhancement on and they put the monomer, um, the monomer liquid polymer powder, which will create that protection so that they can buff them with the lower grit files. And then you have your medium grit abrasives, which are 150 to 180 grit. And these are used to smooth and refine surfaces. And the 180 grit is used to shorten and shape natural nails. Then you have your fine grit abrasives, abrasives which are in the categories of 240 and higher grit. And they are designed for buffing, polishing, removing very fine scratches. Very fine scratches, sorry, excuse me. Now let's get into our two-way or three-way buffer. Your, the two-way or three-way buffer abrasive creates a beautiful shine on your nails and it replaces the cameos that could not be disinfected. Cameo, I didn't say that right. And it. <clears throat> Forgive me for mispronouncing that if I said it wrong. These buffers can be shaped like a two-sided nail file, long and narrow, with one or two additional grit abrasives and a final shine surface. These buffers are generally used on natural nails or in the final steps of the two-color application of a monomer liquid and polymer powder nails, such as your French manicure. When you're buffing the nail plate, Applying excessive pressure or buffing too long can generate excessive and painful heat on the nail bed. That's happened to me before as well. It gets really hot. It's kind of shocking how much heat it can actually create. And this can lead to onycholesis and possible infection. If your client is feeling the heat or burning, lighten the pressure or lower the speed of the buffing and buff few time, fewer times between raising the buffer from the surface. Then we have our single use of cherry cloth towels. These cloth towels must be laundered between clients and paper towels must be thrown away after each use. A fresh clean cherry cloth towel or a new disposable paper towel is used by the client after washing his or her hands. A lot of salons, they will have a bunch of different towels that you can use and the, you'll toss them in a laundry basket and someone will come throughout the day once to get full and rewash them and refill it or they'll have paper towels there for you to use. We've all seen them and we've all probably used them. Then you have your gauze cotton balls or plastic backed pads. These are lint-free plastic backed fiber or cotton pads are often used to remove nail polish. The plastic backing protects nail professionals fingertips from overexposure to drying solvents and other chemicals. The gauze squares or cotton balls are also popular for removal of nail polish because they are inexpensive and perfectly designed for this and other application tasks. I've seen, I've had both used on me and they both work the same way. And all just personal preference for the nail tech and what they're willing to spend. Your plastic or metal spatulas are a single use, a single use plastic or a multi-use metal spatula must be used for removing products from their respective containers to prevent contamination of the products and the spread of disease. If a spatula comes in contact with you or your client's skin, it must be properly cleaned and disinfected before being used again, or it must be replaced thrown away. You never use the same spatula to remove similar products from different containers because the chemistry of the products may be altered. 
So you, once you have one, you can mix it with something else because you don't know if those chemicals will mix together and it won't change the chemical and make it chemically unbalanced. And then we have our professional nail products. I'm giving you guys a lot of information um, about nails. So just bear with me. We're getting, I'm trying to get through it without overwhelming you guys. But once we get to do hands-on, it'll be fun. So with our professional nail products, we have soap, nail polish remover, nail creams and lotions and oils, cuticle removers, nail bleach, color polish, enamel, like here, or varnish, gel polish, we have base coat, hardeners, which you have protein hardener and other, other types, dimethyl urea hardener, we have your top coat, our nail polish dryer, our nail polish dryer products, our hand cream or lotion, you have your nail conditioners and you have sunscreen. The soap is used to clean the cosmetologist and the client's hair before the service begins. And it acts as an infection control tool during the pre-service hand washing procedure by removing microbes and debris. Your nail polish remover. We all probably have some. It removes, it removes the nail polish and it's contained, it has acetone in it, which is colorless and inflammable liquid miscible with water, alcohol, and ether, and has a Swedish odor or burning taste. I'm weird, and I kind of like the smell of nail polish remover. Just like I like the smell of gas. I'm very weird. Don't judge me, people. It is used as a solvent. When you're using um, nail polish remover, you can use cotton balls, you can use gauze pads or you can use the plastic backed cotton pad and you want to saturate it, the cotton or whatever you use on each nail while you're, while you're counting to 10 and the old polish will come off. According to OSHA, you must follow instructions for safely disposing of used chemicals. Do not pour them down the sink or the toilet throw them on the ground or down outside the drains or pour them onto cotton balls. Some of the chemicals have specific disposal requirements. I'm gonna give you an example. Liquid acetone must be saved in a fire department approved metal container and disposed of as a hazardous waste. Then let's get into our nail creams and lotions in your oils. These products are designed to soften dry skin around the nail plate and to increase the flexibility of your natural nail. They are especially effective on nails that appear to be brittle or dry, and they are the number one nail product that should be sold to manicure and pedicure clients. Your nail creams, they are barrier, they're barrier products because they contain ingredients designed to seal the surface of the skin around the nail and hold it, hold it in the subdermal moisture in the skin. Your nail oil, they're designed to absorb into the nail plate to increase flexibility and into the surrounding skin to soften and moisturize. Your cuticle removers are designed to loosen up and dissolve dead tissue on the nail plate so that this tissue can be more easily and thoroughly removed from the nail plate. They are inappropriate for contact with the living skin of the, of the epinicium, and typically these products have a high pH and are irritating to the skin. You want to be careful when you're using this during the application. Um, so that the cuticle remover is applied to the nail plate and not the surrounding skin. Let's get, and then we have our nail bleach. Your nail bleach is designed to apply to the nail plate and under the free edge of the natural nails to remove yellow surface discoloration or stains, like someone who has tobacco stains. 
Usually nail bleaches contain hydrogen peroxide or some other keratin bleaching agent. And you wanna always use these products exactly as they're directed by the manufacturer to avoid damage in the nail plate or surrounding skin. When you're applying um, nail bleach um, to like the yellow part of the nail, you wanna do it with a cotton tipped wooden pusher. So you wanna have a wooden pusher and place cotton around it. And then that's what you'll use to apply the nail bleach to the nail. And you wanna wear gloves. If it's like really, really yellow, then you wanna repeat it until it, the yellow goes away. Then we have our colored polish, enamel, liquor, and varnish. Your colored coatings applied to the natural nail plate are also known as polish, enamel, liquor, or varnish. These describe the, same, the types of products containing similar ingredients, and there's no real difference in the products. Your polish is a generic term, which is describing any type of silicon based colored film applied to the nail. The nail polish's design is basically describes the polish that you're using. It's nothing, it's just a generic term that everybody uses. You usually apply a polish with two coats over a base coat and then you follow it up with a top coat. When you are applying your nail polish, you wanna remove the brush from the bottle and wipe the side of the brush away from you on the inside of the lip of the bottle to remove excess polish. So what that means is when you're washing, I mean, not washing, when you are removing the polish, the brush, the nail polish from out of its tube container, the, when you're trying to take some of it off, I usually do as they were saying, and you want to wipe the side of the brush that is away from you on the inside. So the side of the brush that's on the other side, that's not facing you so that you can get that off. So then when you take it out, it's easier, it flows better and you're able to polish the nails. Gel polish products. If it's a form of nail color that can last 10 to 21 days and is a high demand in a salon. Very, very high demand. I don't really typically, I don't think I see or know anyone today that does not have gel polish on their nails. Yeah, no, I can't think of anybody that does regular polish on their nails, except for like little girls. But even my daughter who's 10, she gets gel polish when we go to the nail salon. It just lasts longer. It's worth more. I feel like it's worth more for the amount of money that you're spending for it to last longer. It was developed specifically for natural nails and it's cured under the light and it will bring, you have to go back to the salon. You don't, you're supposed to go back to the salon every two weeks for, to, for them to properly remove it because it's supposed to be removed a certain type of way. Um, this application is basically the same as traditional polishes although there are nuances that should be learned through education by the manufacturer of the gel. And they also require a light cured base coat. So they have specific top coat and base coat for gel polish because they have to be cured. It has to be cured. Your base coat creates a colorless layer on the natural nail and nail enhancement that promotes adhesion of polish. It also helps to prevent the polish pigments from creating a yellowish stain or other discoloration discoloration on your natural nail. It's like a barrier blocker from the pigments that are, or the underlying pigments that are in the nail polish that you're using. Base coats usually rely on adhesive, which aid in retaining polish for a longer time. And it just looks better when you have a base coat and a top coat. You have nail hardeners. They are used to improve the surface hardeners and or durability of weak or thin nail blades. I normally use nail hardener, which is also your protein hardener, which is a combination of clear and polish and protein, like collagen. When I like take my um, my nail enhancement, 
my nail tips, when I take them off, I'll use a nail hardener or protein hardener to get my nails back to being strong and thick again before I go get another nail service. If I know I'm going to wait a long time in between getting my nails um, filled again. Then you have dimethyl, dimethyl yo, let's, let's try and say this the way it says, because dimethyl, dimethyl, urea hardeners, use, let's just do the abbreviation, DMU for short, <laughs> to add cross links to the natural nail plate. A DMU, DMU does not cause adverse skin reactions, and these hardeners do not work as quickly as hardeners containing methylene glycol, but they will not over harden nails as those with methylene, methylene glycol can with overuse. We have our top coat, which we um, which goes on, which is your layer of color, it's colored polish, Sorry, your top coat, it's clear and it's layered over your colored polish to help prevent like any chipping and to add the shine that we all see once we're done with our nails. Um, once they're done painting them, you have the gel top coat and you also have regular top coat. With the gel top coat, it has to be light cured just as you would with the gel polish. Nail polish dryer products. Nail polish dryer products accelerate accelerators are designed to be used over a top coat to to hasten the drying of the nail polish. It helps it dry a little bit faster, and they are typically applied with a dropper or a brush or a, or sprayed. I've always used a sprayed one. I've never used it or had it used with a dropper or a brush. I've always just used one that's in the spray container, especially if I'm in a rush. Hand creams and lotions. Hand creams and lotions add a finishing touch to a manicure since they soften and smooth the hands and they make the skin and finished manicure look as beautiful as possible. Your hand creams and lotions, they add a finishing touch to a manicure. They add the extra moisture that you get if your nails are dry um, after you get your manicure done. And since they soften and smooth the hands, they make the skin and finished manicure look as beautiful as possible. Your nail conditioners contain ingredients to reduce brittleness of the nail, and they should be applied directly to by the manufacturer. They should be applied as directed by the manufacturer. And this treatment is especially useful when applied at night before bedtime. And now conditioners, they can be oils, lotions, or creams. And then we have sunscreens. Sunscreen, these are lotion radiation and contain ingredients that protect the skin from damage by the ultraviolet radiation, UVA, from the sun. And UVA is known to cause age spots, hyperpigmentation on the backs of the hands and damage to the DNA of the skin cells. The necessary components to perform, perform a basic manicure 
your basic manicure is the very is the very is the foundation of all nail technology services. From the information that you learn from the basic manicure, you can do other nail services based off the um, foundation of your basic manicure. When you're getting a manicure, it should take about 30 to 45 minutes at the most. That does include your nail polish. And before you graduate school, you want and to make you like more of a hireable or more successful in your career, you might want to practice this just to give yourself a little bit more of an edge opposed to somebody else who may not be interested in doing nails or uh, manicures or pedicures. Your three-part procedure is your pre-service, which is cleaning tools and preparation, your service, which is step-by-step -step plan for the service, your post-service, caring for the client after procedure. We have gone over this um, in a few chapters previously about the three-part procedure when it comes to hair. It's the same thing when it comes to nails. Hand washing prevents the spread of communicable diseases. You wanna wash your hands before and after each client, have clients wash hands before their service, provide clean nail brushes, and hands, but keep in mind, people say this, I don't, know people, I don't know how many people have heard, say just use hand sanitizer. That does not replace washing your hands. So you can't just have the client or you just can't use hand sanitizer thinking that you're washing away any potential diseases that are already on your hands. Your manicure consultation. You wanna use a client intake form you want to check your client's nails and skin, and you want to discuss the client preferences and their lifestyle so that you can determine what's the best options for them to get the longest wear from their nail service so that they don't feel like they're wasting their money. So this is why a nail consultation or a manicure consultation or a consultation for a client's hair is very important. The basic shape of nails for women, you have your square, your squoval, squoval, round, oval, and pointed. Your square nail is completely straight across the fridge with no rounding at the outside edges. Your squoval nail has a square free edge that is rounded off at the corner edges. Your round nail, it should be slightly tapered and usually should extend just a bit past the fingertip. Your oval nail is conservative nail shape that is thought to be attractive on most women's hands. And the pointed nail is suited to thin hands with long fingers and narrow nail beds. You're choosing a nail color. You want to choose a nail color that complements the client's skin tone or coordinates with clothing, or you want to allow the client to choose. I'm weird and I like to do weird colors. I like to have bright colors. I like to have different designs, 5,000 different colors in one hand. So I typically don't go with anything that complements my skin tone or with my clothing. I'm more of a person, be creative, do what you want to do. As long as it looks good, I'm cool. I love color. When you're applying polish, you want to apply with the base coat first, two coats of polish, then you want to apply your top coat. You want to do thin, even coats to create maximum smoothness and minimal drying time.
So when you're doing a manicure for a man, so basically we're catering, catering to men because they need catering too. You want to think about the men's nail shapes, the men's massage, a men's basic color, which is typically clear. And you want to mark it to attract the men to come get their nails done because some men feel some type of way when they're going to nail salons and they feel like men shouldn't get manicures. I think all men should get manicures. Nothing weird about it. It doesn't discredit you being a man, but men think otherwise. Men usually prefer their nails to be shorter than women so that they don't have nails. So they have to get theirs cut as short as they possibly can. They do enjoy the massage portion when they're getting the manicure or pedicure. And some of them sometimes want a longer one, but they also want you to put some strength behind that massage too, because they are a man. Men basically wear clear polish. Um, I've seen some with color polish and there's nothing wrong with that. When you're marketing to a man, um, you want to include like a brief description about what they're getting down, the benefits of what they're getting done and the benefits of why they should get it done. And you also want to put flyers in like gyms or stores or places where men gather the most so that they know that this is an option for them and that they can go and get a service that is designed directly to, for them. To complete a hand and arm massage, you want to promote the, a hand and arm massage promotes blood circulation. It relaxes muscles, relieves pain, soothes and relaxes the client. Your massage is the manipulation of the soft tissues of the body and is ancient therapeutic treatment to promote circulation of the blood and lymph, relaxation of the muscles and relief from pain. It has other benefits as well. The massage is one of the client's highest priorities during manicure and is often the most memorable part of the manicure. Same thing when you're doing the shampoo service and you're doing a head massage on, on the client, that's going to be what they remember the most. Same goes for um, when you're doing for the hands. General movements, you have the effleurage, which is your gliding. You have petrissage or kneading, which is lifting and squeezing. You have Tapotment, which is a rapid tapping or shrinking or striking motion of the hands against the skin. You have vib vibrations, which is a continuous trembling or shaking movement applied by the hand without leaving contact with the skin. And you have friction, which incorporates various strokes that manipulate or press one layer of tissue over another. And the hands are placed around the arm with the fingers pointing in position directions, in opposite directions, and then gently twisted in the opposite directions on the arm as one would wring out a washcloth. The purpose of giving a massage in manicuring is the inducement of relaxation. You wanna have your client as relaxed as possible. Same goes when you're doing a um, shampoo service. You want to have your client as relaxed as possible to relieve any tension, any stress, any pressure. Same goes for people in their hands. The differences between spa manicures and basic manicures, they require extensive knowledge of nail care and skin care. They usually include a relaxing massage and exfoliation. And they may include use of rose oils, paraffin dips, hand masks, and more moist towel applications. Then you have your theme manicures. These contain products to support the theme. Um, for example, like in the book, they say you like a chocolate wonder manicure and pedicure or a pumpkin fall festival manicure and pedicure. With those names, they either will have products that go along with that service, like they'll give you chocolate or you have like a pumpkin mask or something along those lines to support the theme of the manicure or pedicure you're getting. Or like you have like your rose petal manicure, pedicure, they'll probably have little rose petals in it. It's the same thing. Then you have your waterless manicures. Your hands are not soaked in water. Your cuticles are softened with lotion and heated mitts. 
Your waterless manicure eliminates you having to put your hands in the water. And many clients prefer this manicure and they believe that it is more relaxing and produces better results than traditional water manicure. Why is aromatherapy, why aromatherapy is used in a nurse during a nail service? Because it involves the use of highly concentrated, non-oily and volatile essential oils, which can relax you, um, keep you calm, and they have other types, but when you are using these, it requires extensive study. Otherwise, only blended oils that are already mixed and tested should be used, only as directed. So if you're not thoroughly knowledgeable about how to use essential oils, don't use them until you have gotten, have gained the knowledge to be able to use them correctly. The benefits of a par paraffin, paraffin wax treatments. They help retain moisture in the skin. And they also have excellent sealing properties. And there's different types of applications when it comes to um, the paraffin wax treatments. You have your plastic bag ap paraffin um, application. You have your cheesecloth or paper towel paraffin application. You have spray paraffin and you have your, yeah, that's about it. So your plastic bag is an easy way to apply paraffin to the hands and feet by using metal measuring cup to add an equal amounts of warm paraffin to small, to two small clear plastic bags. This is what they use on your feet and they put your feet in there and they spread it around your feet and it hardens up and then they remove it. So let's sit there for about a good two, three minutes, and then they remove it from off your feet. The cheesecloth, the paper towel, paraffin application, the paraffin dip cheesecloth or paper towels can also be a luxurious, luxurious application method. And you have the paraffin bath close to the manicure table, and it is best if the paraffin is located on a movable cart for this method. And you want to dip the paper or the cheesecloth, cheesecloth into the paraffin vertically by holding the corners and you want to raise it up and allow the paraffin wax to drip off and you want to raise the lower raise and lower the paper towel or cloth three times then you have your spray paraffin which is also an option for clean applications and with this type of method a special machine with replaceable paraffin cartridges is used the warm paraffin is sprayed from the cartridge on the hands and arm and is then placed in plastic mitts or plastic wrap and inserted into terry cloth or electric mitts. The single use commercial gloves. These are your one time use commercial gloves that have paraffin inside of them already. The heating pad inside the glove is activated by massaging it and this heats up the paraffin that's inside of the glove. When you have it warm, you wanna insert the hands into the heated paraffin mitts, and then you wanna discard the mitts when the treatment is done. That is considered your single use implement. Nail art options are for clients vary in different forms, different shapes, different designs, different 3D art, you have your French manicure, you have your color fading, you have your color blocking, you have marbleizing, you have um, your ombre effect, uh, you have side by side, you have, you have so many different types, like, and they keep expanding, and they keep growing, and they keep finding different ways to do nail art. It's amazing what they can come up with. And here's a few pictures of different nail art. I like this one, that's cool. I've had so many different nail designs, it doesn't make any sense, but that 
is the end of chapter 25, Manicuring. For summary review, it is important to learn about nail equipment and supplies. It is important to learn about nail services and the infection control that accompanies them. If a student would like to continue their nail education, they can learn advanced techniques from their instructor, trade magazines, and beauty shows. That will conclude our chapter 25 manicure chapter. There's a lot of information, a lot of words, a lot of definitions, and a lot of parts to manicure. But y'all stuck it out and I'm proud of y'all. So for your homework, I want y'all to read the chapter and do the final exam. And then for the fun activity and class, we'll play a little game. And we're going to do a manicure with however many products you can gain in eight minutes. And then we're gonna talk about what could have been better with the products that you have or what could have been better if you could have made a product your manicure better because you were missing some items and you could have used those items to enhance your manicure. Something fun, something to do. And until next time, y'all, hope y'all have a good rest of your day.